Okay, so I just finished up making a video about Rattlegram, and in the background here charging was the uh, Bofung uh, UV17R. And I thought, you know what, people are going to ask about the 17R because it's kind of new, it's very confusing, there are many versions of the UV17. I got this yesterday. It's probably the very last handheld I'm ever going to buy. I recently just eBayed off all of my old Bofungs and anything that didn't take USB-C got rid of it. Um, and then bought these Quensheng, which I'm not impressed with, so we'll save that for another time. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about the UV17R because uh, there is a lot of confusion, and it's a really great radio, and I don't think it's getting enough attention because Bofung went and released the UV21, which is supposed to be a step up from this, and it's, it, it isn't. I'm not convinced. Um, so let's take a look. So a couple things that um, right off the start. People have been confused about the charging. USB-C charging happens at the battery level. There's a little plug there for USB-C. Plug it in there, your battery charges. You can also charge it on the cradle. Now this cradle seems to be improved by the factory, but at one time these were shipping um, with an insert. And if you look carefully, you can see there's sort of a cradle insert in here that adapts particularly to this radio. Has these little slots in the side for it to mount. I went crazy trying to find that piece because someone on YouTube said, you know, remember to do it. Well, it was already in there. And so if you sit the radio in there, it, it will charge. Now, um, it's completely charged as it is, and I want to just talk about what I think about it. So I'm going to restart it here so that we can kind of get a look at what's Welcome. going on. Frequency mode. All right, so what you can see is that big, beautiful color screen. Um, basically red, blue, and white is what it produces. The default is that there is an RSSI meter in there. I don't know how well that's going to come out on camera, but I promise you there's an RSSI meter for each of the two frequencies, top and bottom. One of the things that confused me about this radio, and I had to just basically go out and, and buy it and see what the situation was, you can notice that I have this at 2 meters and 70 centimeters. But no pictures of this, and none of the Bofung uh, descriptions of this mention its its frequency range. It's actually a tri-band, but they had it set for something like 444 on the bottom and 222 on the top. And so I think a lot of people didn't buy it because they didn't think it had two meters in it. It actually does. It just runs the entire range from that two meters all the way up into the UHF. So you can basically plug anything in there you want. Um, it is, it is tri-band. Now, if there are dead zones uh, for other, for, for example, air band and things like that below 145, um, I haven't tested that because I'm not going to mess around with that. Um, so I don't know what the battery, how well the battery is going to do, but um, there are some things that I, I wanted to point out. So one of the weird things about this is the flashlight. Um, it has a flashlight on the bottom, and I've never really been a big fan of radios having flashlights. Uh, but what I decided with this radio is this radio uniquely does enough things that I actually might use it for a majority of reasons, keep it with me most of the time in order to use the combination of these things. And so we have the flashlight now on the bottom, and the reason is uh, it's a different kind of design. What strikes me about this radio and what makes me like it above all other radios is, well, here's the question, where's the speaker? Okay, so uh, it doesn't have a division between keypad and then speaker, and then screen. So if you look at a traditional Baofeng style radio, you've got your little tiny keypad down here and this giant speaker area. You gotta put the speaker somewhere. And so that affects radio design. What Bofung did here is they just put the speaker behind the keypad. And it's a big speaker compared to, say, the little dinky Quensheng speaker. Uh, it's a large speaker. It's backlit, you can kind of see in there. It gives a little bit of a new wave kind of a look to it. Um, but what I like about this is that gave us more screen room. This is a pretty large screen. I think they say it's 1.7 inch and it's very bright. Um, but more importantly, the keypad is of a size and location that you can use it without having to use two hands or fumble the radio. So this reminds me of early cell phones where if you wanted to tap out a text message, you could do that. Um, really easily. So the radio handles well in one hand, then I don't feel like I struggle to use the tip of my thumb to use DTMF. Um, I really like the feel and functionality of the radio that way. This is, that's the seller for me. That's what made me decide this is the, this is the last radio I buy. Other features. Um. You have FM, uh, FM radio. Oh. 
Um, now, the reception of FM radio is going to be based on the antenna that you have in your in your local reception. The antenna on this, uh, it's 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 a Bofeng antenna. I'm definitely going to replace it. I just don't know what I'm going to replace it with. Um, if you click the bottom button here, you get your FM. Um, and then if you hold the uh, zero button, um, you get you get weather. So um, simple button presses. I like that you get weather uh, with a simple hold of the button. You get your radio with a simple click of the button. So there's two things I'm going to use it for. Weather radio, FM radio. So I'm listening to the radio, a talk station. I get out of my car and want to listen to the rest of it. I can click that on and I can continue to listen to the radio. Um, so there's three things that I think are great about it. Volume is good. Sound quality is it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't, I've never done like the high-end radios, uh, Yesu and ICOM, because in my time, um, there have always been cheaper options. And so I can't really say if it compares to a $600 radio. I just think a $600 radio is absolute nonsense. And there's no reason to own one in my opinion. But that's my opinion. Now, there are is one thing that sort of irks me about it. One of the reasons I bought this is because of how big the the screen is, uh, how big the lettering is. And that's great. That was the, a big selling point for me. But what I want to show you is if I were to switch, let's see, how do we switch to, uh, let's see here. I want to go to, now that's search. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah, it's menu. That's not what I want. Here's what I want. Channel mode. All right. So going into channel mode, I hold down the, the green button here and it gives me channel mode. <laughs> okay. So there's the repeater. Uh, I got W3XP70 here. Uh, not so visible. Very difficult for me to see. Uh, kind of defeated the whole purpose of wanting this radio. Now, I program this with Chirp. And if you have the latest version of Chirp, you absolutely can program this with Chirp. It works just fine. The radio is in there uh, in the Chirp list. People are saying that that's not the case. It is the case. Because I programmed it with Chirp, I wonder if this is just a result of Chirp sending ASCII figures uh, for the radio's name, the ID. There's no way to put a name in through the keypad. It says in the manual, if you want to add names to your channels, you got to do that using software, but it doesn't say what software. Now, if I were to find or if Bofeng comes up with a software for this radio, perhaps when it generates lettering, it will format it into its cut, you know, its font style up here, and I'd be able to see this much larger. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I don't expect it to. For my purposes, it doesn't really matter. Frequency and, mode. And the reason is the repeater that I'm using is this is the single repeater site I have in my neighborhood, um, a 70 centimeter and a, and a two meter repeater. I can see it from out my window. I'm going to use it for those two. Um, so I can guess what repeater I'm on just by sort of looking at it. But if I wanted to chalk this full of, of uh, repeater names, that would be... For me, a disadvantage, uh, I have a hard time seeing that, but that's really comes down to how good your site is at this point. Um, I would uh, be willing to chalk this full of repeaters, but I find that, you know, you get a new radio and you throw all these repeater codes in and you don't use them. You know, you throw them in because they're there and I end up not using them. So I know I'll probably be monitoring and using this repeater. I've got my A and B and that's what I'm going to use. As far as durability, I mean, it's just, it probably looks tougher than it is. I would not want to drop this. Uh, another thing I noticed is that the uh, bezel around the screen is really minimal. So uh, Bofeng used to make a point, less so than Quenchang. I don't have a Bofeng anymore, a different Bofeng. Um, they used to be really good at protecting the uh, window uh, using some sort of a bezel. And there's very little bezel. I could lay this down. Um, and not worry about it being scratched, but it will easily get scratched because the, the, uh, there's a lot of screen space and very little bezel. So it reminds me of the old cell phones where I used to buy a new cell phone and, and be just completely, you know, irked when I get the first scratch in the screen, plastic screen, and it's my new phone. So it kind of reminds me of that. I'm not sure if this is glass or plastic, but I have to assume it's plastic. So functionally, it works like a Bofeng. Uh, menus driven like a Bofeng. Uh, it's a little easier to navigate once you know where things are, fewer key presses. 
I like it. Uh, this radio is going to spend a lot of time with me. Now again, this is the UV-17R. There's a UV-17L as well. Um, and that one is supposed to have GPS, and it turns out that because of the confusion that people are having with this radio, not their fault, um, by looking at the radio, you, you can't tell what you're getting. And I know that some people have reported that they've ordered the GPS model, the L model, and not gotten GPS. The 17R doesn't have GPS, nor did I want GPS. That's another thing I feel is useless in radios. I don't do APRS. I personally can't stand APRS. I don't see the utility in it. It's antiquated. It's difficult to work with. Um, if you're into APRS, then sure, you might want to go and try to find the GPS version. I, I don't find that necessary and I don't want it. I've a lot of, had a lot of radios with GPS and never once used the GPS. So um, be aware that the 17R is not a GPS model. Um, and then there's other, there's a, an M version, an L version, there's the R version, which is this. Um, they all are slightly different. Um, one of those versions has encryption. Um, we don't need encryption. We're not allowed to encrypt. So um, there's an M version out there. I guess it's called a 17M. Uh, that would have encryption like a lot of the old Bofungs did, but we don't, we don't use encryption. So again, one less menu thing for me to worry about. Uh, very straightforward. Now, I bought the Quensheng, you know, when everybody else did. Wow, it's a radio that you can develop. You can, I'm not impressed. Unless someone makes a uh, pager decoder, a POXAG decoder for this, then I have no use for this radio. I am not enough of a programmer to make a POXAG decoder, but if that's possible, if anybody is a programmer for Quencheng, um, a POXAG decoder would be great if we could actually receive, I'm, I'm an EMT, so I have a pager, uh, and it still uses the old POXAG technology. If Quencheng can get POXAG as a app, that makes this radio basically superior to anything else that you can get, nobody else does it. So that's my review of the uh, 17R, and I don't do reviews of radios separately. Like you know, people do have they, people do that. They're, people make reviews of new radios all the time. There isn't much out there on this radio, um, and and even when there is, the person that's done the review is fumbling with it and doesn't really know what it does by the time they make the video. Um, I I have lived with it long enough to tell you you know the details. It's not GPS. It's not encrypted. It's uh, amateur radio. Um, it is tri-band at minimal, and it does transmit on any frequency I've put in here. Um, you don't need chirp to program it because you know unless you want to put names on things. If you want the name, mode. you're going to have to use chirp or some programming. But if you're only using a couple repeaters, frequency mode, and doesn't really matter if you have the name, you get this nice, uh, get this nice display. Now again, there is an RSSI meter. I don't have this set up to transmit anything from one radio to another. Um, I don't really personally know why RSSI meters are necessary. So you can see I'm kind of a downer when it comes to a lot of the things that we take for for granted in amateur radio. Um, old CB radios had, you know, S meters and stuff like that. It's irrelevant. I can hear you or I can't hear you. I don't care what the radio has to say about it, but it's there if you're into that kind of thing. It adds a little bit of sophistication. So, uh, yeah, buy it. I paid $24. Okay, I know people are always amazed at Bofung. It was always a good deal, 25 bucks. But this radio, I could easily have paid 154 and still thought I got it at a steal. Really, really nicely designed, really well thought out. I like the big giant speaker that doesn't take up real estate. So 17R is what you're looking for. So uh, if you're interested in that, pick it up. Got it on Amazon, 24 bucks, 7.3.